for Nikki, and we also have chapters in every state across the nation, and we are all pumped up to have Nikki Haley for president. At this point, I want to ask for your vote for Nikki Haley. The polls are still open today until 3 o'clock, so that's for early voting, and then you can also come out Super Tuesday with your family, friends, and neighbors. Today, Nikki is going to share her vision for the country and for saving our country. She is so enthusiastic, determined, and patriotic, and you will be inspired and have an incredible afternoon. At this point, it's my honor to introduce the next president of the United States. Let's hear it for Nikki. Why is Congress the only group that refuses to balance a budget? 
We'll stop the spending, we'll stop the borrowing, we'll eliminate their earmarks, and I will veto any spending bill that doesn't take us back to pre-COVID levels. That will save us trillions. And then we'll take as many federal programs as we can and we'll send them down to the state level. That will dramatically reduce the size of the federal government, but it will empower people on the ground. Think education, think health care, think welfare, think mental health. If we took those resources, cut the strings, and sent them down to the states, those resources are best decided closest to the people as opposed to Washington bureaucrats. And then we're watching the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. We have got to open up the middle class. That's why we want to do tax cuts for the middle class and simplify the brackets. We want to eliminate the federal gas and diesel tax. And we want to make small business tax cuts permanent. Small businesses are the heartbeat of our economy. We need to start acting on that. And when you talk about Congress, Congress has one job, one job, and that's just to give us a budget on time. In case you, turn, you haven't turned on the TV, they didn't do that. Do you know Congress has only given us a budget on time four times in 40 years? Four times in 40 years. Do you know what I say to that? You don't give us a budget on time, you don't get paid, period. Because it would hurt him. 
We can't wait one more day to pass a strong border bill. Congress needs to get in a room, strengthen that bill, do their job, and Trump needs to stay out of it, period. And you know, when growing up in rural South Carolina, my parents always taught me that you take care of those who take care of you. I'm going to ask you for taking care of those who take care of us. Right now in America, over 35,000 of our veterans are homeless. One in three suffers from PTSD or thoughts of suicide. We lose 22 heroes a day to suicide. If a veteran needs a doctor's appointment, at the VA, on average, it takes 29 days. Why 29 days? Because on the 30th day, they can go to the doctor or hospital of their choice. So midway through the 29 days, they get a call to reschedule, and the clock starts all over again. It's shameful how we treat our veterans. Now, I'm the proud wife of a combat veteran who served in Afghanistan. That was a lot of prayers answered, but that was the easy part. When we got home, life got hard. Michael couldn't hear loud noises. He couldn't be in crowds. Life had passed him by for the year that he was gone, and the transition was tough. We can't just love our men and women when they're gone. We gotta love them when they come back home, too. two-week transition, let's take care of them for the long haul. We should do telehealth so they can get the mental health care they need right when they need it. They should be able to go to the doctor or hospital of their choice. They've earned that right. And I think the best way we go about dealing with VA health care, I think every member of Congress should have to get their health care from the VA. And you watch. You've got North Korea testing intercontinental ballistic missiles capable of hitting the U.S. You've got China doing cyber attacks on our infrastructure. And now we have Russia blinding satellites so we can't see what they're doing. Make no mistake, none of that would have happened had we not had that debacle in Afghanistan. The idea that Michael and his military brothers and sisters who served there had to watch us leave Bagram Air Force Base in the middle of the night without telling our allies who stood shoulder to shoulder with us for decades because we asked them to be there. Think about what that said to our friends. More importantly, think about what that said to our enemies. Now is the time that we need a leader with moral clarity. right and wrong, and good and bad. Two weeks ago, Donald Trump said that he would stand with Putin and encourage him to invade our allies. Now think about that. I don't care if he went off the teleprompter when he did it. That's what he felt. But the problem with that is, you mean to tell me that Trump is willing to side with a dictator who kills his political opponents? Trump is willing to side with a thug who arrests American journalists and holds them hostage. Trump is willing to side with a tyrant who's made no bones about wanting to destroy America. And Trump is going to side with a madman over our allies who stood with us after 9-11? In that one moment, he made our allies vulnerable, 
He emboldened Putin, and he put our military men and women who were serving there in danger. And now you hear from, from Trump and from now the Republicans following suit that you have to choose between Ukraine and Israel and the border. They are flat out lying to you. And that's the problem. No one is telling the American people the truth. I don't believe we should give cash to any country, friend or enemy, because you can't follow it, you can't hold it accountable. But the goal of a president should always be to prevent war. Those are NATO countries that immediately puts America at war. This is about preventing war. They need to have the equipment and ammunition to win so that we don't have to go to war. This is the part they don't want you to know. Securing the border is priority number one, period. But if we just helped Ukraine and Israel, that's only 5% of our defense budget. If we helped Ukraine, Israel, and secure the border, that's less than 20% of Biden's green subsidies. So don't let them lie to you and say that you have to choose. A president in Congress has to choose preventing war. A president in Congress has to choose protecting Americans. And a president in Congress owe you the truth. And that's what you're not getting, and I will always give that to you. policy. Now let's talk about what you need to do on Tuesday. <laughs> because right now the people of North Carolina have a decision to make. Do you want more of the same or do you want to go in a new direction? Seventy percent of Americans don't want Donald Trump or Joe Biden. they think Donald Trump and Joe Biden are too old to be president. Now is the time we need a new generational leader that can put in eight years, day and night, fixing the things we need fixed with no negativity, no drama, no vendettas, just real results for the American people. Courage for me to run, 
and courage for every one of you to know, don't complain about what happens in a general election if you don't vote in this primary. It matters. But I also want to point out what's happened in the last couple of months. They said we wouldn't make it to Iowa. We did. New Hampshire, the day of the vote, they said we were down 30 points. We got 43% of the vote. That night, Donald Trump got on stage and was completely unhinged. All he did was talk about revenge and my dress. <laughs> then the next day, he said anyone who supports her is barred permanently from that. Presumptive nominee. No, we don't anoint kings in America. We have elections. <laughs> then he had a couple of court cases that he lost and some judgments, and he's been on a rant about how he's a victim. <laughs> the problem with all of that, whether it's the night of New Hampshire or whether it was after these court cases, at no point is he talking about the American people. At no point is he talking about the fact we're $34 trillion in debt. At no point is he talking about the fact that only 31% of eighth graders in our country are proficient in reading. At no point is he talking about the lawlessness on the border and what he could have done to stop it. At no point is he talking about law and order in our cities. And at no point is he talking about wars around the world. All he's doing is talking about himself. And what he doesn't get, this isn't about him, this is about the American people. And just last night, he tweeted, because we had a great crowd in Washington, D.C., he tweeted and said, anyone who supports her or helps her will not have access to me. conversation to where we are seeing our country go. Because Donald Trump is now redefining the Republican Party. I believe that our national debt matters. I believe in fiscal restraint. I believe in smaller government. I believe in economic freedom. in debt in just four years. He loves to say that was because of COVID. That was less than 20%. Instead of shrinking our agencies, he grew our agencies. Instead of cleaning them out, he let them get cluttered. He actually added to the problem. And Republicans are now following suit when they're doing all the spending. And the other side is, I believe that national security is about peace through strength. That when we strengthen our alliances, it puts our enemies on their heels because they're intimidated by that. But Donald Trump believes that we need to retreat. He believes we need to let them do what they want. I will tell you this, America can never be so arrogant to think we don't need friends. We always need friends. to deal with the RNC party structure. Before the primary is over, he has already put his daughter-in-law's head. He's put his campaign manager to run it. And they have announced that the RNC is no longer about ticket, about winning races up and down the ticket. It's about Donald Trump. Now, he spent $60 million in campaign contributions on his own personal court cases. This is now about him making the RNC his own legal slush fund. And no one is saying anything. And what I'll tell you is that there is a resolution that has been put down that asks the question about whether the RNC can spend money on his legal fees. 
you have three people in North Carolina that represent you. They need to show us a vote on the record. We need to see exactly how every one of those committee members votes for the RNC so that we know exactly what they're doing with any money that goes there. But this is a pattern. I was in Michigan. In 2012, Michigan was a bright light. They basically were winning seats up and down the ticket. They had done right to work. I had been there. I was campaigning for people. They were celebrating. Since Donald Trump became president, they lost the governor's mansion, they lost the state house, they lost the state senate. I went to Minnesota, the exact same thing happened. I went to Colorado after that, no Republican has gotten above 45% statewide since Donald Trump became president. We lost in 2018, we lost in 2020, we lost in 2022. You look at what happened two weeks ago. Republicans lost the vote on Mayorkas. They lost the vote on Israel. The RNC chair lost her job, and he had his fingerprints in all of it. How many more times do we have to lose before we realize maybe Donald Trump is the problem? You know, eight months ago, I dropped my husband, Michael, off at 4 a.m. for another year-long deployment. And I watched him and 230 soldiers pick up their two duffel bags of belongings to go to a country they've never been, all in the name of protecting America. They're willing to sacrifice their lives and their families because they still believe in this amazing experiment that is America. So if they're willing to sacrifice for us there, should we be willing to fight for America here? Because we have a country to save. And you know, all the media is losing their minds. They're like, why does she keep fighting? Why does she keep doing this? I think I've pretty much proven I'm not trying to be vice president. <laughs> They worry about getting a job. They worry about making ends meet. They don't know that they're ever going to be able to afford a home. And they feel these wars around the world. And all of that is under this umbrella of America that's full of anger and division. And then we want to know why there's so much stress, anxiety, and depression. Our kids deserve to know what normal feels like. immigrants come across the border and nobody stopped them. It's not normal under Joe Biden to focus more on gender pronouns than whether our kids can read them. It's not normal. It's not normal to have all these wars around the world. And it's not normal under Donald Trump to sit there and mock the military. It's not normal under Donald Trump to side with a tyrant over our allies. It's not normal for Donald Trump to spend campaign contributions on his own personal court cases. And it's not normal for Joe Biden to call opponents fascists and Donald Trump to call his opponents vermin. None of this is normal. You know, when I announced that I was running, they asked me why, and I said, you know, my parents came here 50 years ago to an America that was strong and proud and full of opportunities. I want them to know that country again. I'm doing this for Michael and his military brothers and sisters. They need to know their sacrifice matters. They need to know that we love our country. I'm doing this for my daughter who just got married, and I saw how hard it was for her and her husband to buy a home. 
The average home buyer in America now is 49 years old. The American dream is leaving them. And I'm doing this for my son, who's a senior in college. And I am tired of watching him write papers of things he doesn't believe in just to get an A. That's not us. That's not us. don't think their kids are going to live as good a life as we did. We can't be okay with that. I'm not okay with that. We do have a country to save. But let me say this. There's a lot of us that want normal again. But we have to go and do something about it. You can go vote today before 3 o'clock. So I need everybody to vote. I need you to take 10 people to vote with you. I need you to take a yard sign, and if you're one of those people that can't have a yard sign in your yard, put it in the back of your car. I need you to text and email all your friends, all your family, because you will be shocked at how many people are only general election voters. And I want you to give them a message from me. In a general election, we're given a choice. In a primary, we make our choice.